Good morning, church family online. Good to see you today. I'm Pastor Troy. Uh, it is just me and the, the family here today. Uh, we decided in response to, to continued rises in COVID cases uh, to, to hang out here online with you all. And it's so great that we're poised to do that, that we have a church that believes in that. So it's us here and uh, it's Elias's toy Rocktopus also joining us. Uh, he's, he's rocking out with his rocktopus today. Uh, but see you, buddy. See you downstairs. Love you. Anyways, uh, it's good to see you again. I'm Pastor Troy, uh, pastor here of The Point Church, and uh, hope you're doing well. Hey, uh, let's do a check-in. Uh, give me an emoji, how you're feeling this morning. Uh, give me that emoji. Let me see how you're feeling. Are you awake? What do you need? Do you need a coffee emoji? Uh, maybe a pillow? Is there a pillow? Like, I could use a pillow just to go back to sleep today. If you're new, I want to welcome you. Thanks for checking out worship with us here online. I know things are so different today, but uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which tells me that even as my circumstances change, he never does. We're actually going to talk more about that here this morning, what that actually looks like in this season. But again, I want to welcome you. Uh, if you want to take a moment and fill out our contact card on our website later on, I would invite you to do that. Let us know how we can pray for you. If you uh, have been watching online and you want to get connected to some community. I'm going to, again, talk more about this uh, during our announcements at the end, but I want to invite you to, to join our Alive Online group. Uh, basically, that is our online community ministry at the Point Church, uh, where we believe that even though we are digitally connected, that we should still be connected in relationships. And so we're using a, a Facebook group to connect you to other people you can watch. We, you basically share uh, the service, the screen share thing going on there. I don't know. I'm not technologically advanced, babe, so I'm just talking, but... So you share the screen, and then you can see each other, and you're muted, so you're not going to hear anybody's, you are good, you know, in the background. Uh, but so that way you can worship with other people, and then afterwards you can stick around and have some small group discussion and prayer time. So I invite you to check that out if you aren't already. We've got some awesome leaders and people who are equipped to love you and care for you on there. So uh, anyways, we are in week number two of our message series, The Weight of Waiting. And if you're like me, you're feeling that weight right now. You're feeling the weight of sitting around and waiting for, for everything, it seems like, for, uh, for medicinal, what, that's not the word, medical breakthroughs, there we go, uh, waiting for Christmas to show up to bring some cheer. You're, you're waiting for a lot of stuff right now. I, I went, I had to pick up a new phone um, yesterday, and I sat in the parking lot, and I said, I'm here to pick up the phone on the app, you know, and apparently it never went through. So I had to, I, I hurried up, I got there, and I waited for like 20 minutes for nothing. And then finally the guy said, oh, hey, sir, you need to go and get in the store and trade in your phone there. So I had to mask up. And so I get there and then the sales associate at the phone department got called to help at the registers because they were short because they got slammed. And so I, I was waiting and then I got inside to wait another 10 minutes and it was just constant. And then because I was trading in my phone and, and upgrading, I had to wait for my phone. So it just feels like we're constantly waiting right now. And we're going to be today uh, in Luke chapter 1. That's where we're at for this Advent series. Uh, Luke chapter 1. We're going to be in verses 26 to 38. So I want to invite you to go ahead, grab your Bible, and turn there. Uh, follow along, or if somehow you can use your smart device, follow along on a Bible app or something. Let me see. We've got, um, got some eyeballs and some coffee. We've got some... Uh, some confetti and streamers. Devin, that's absolutely you because you're a, a morning person, apparently. I'm not. Good to see you on here, chat, uh, for sure. Hey, Noel, welcome as always. So, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. And this is going to be green. I'll try to take my time. In the sixth month, that's sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to, to be married to Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now, this might be a little different than what's on the screen, slightly newer translation. 
28. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Verse 29. Mary was greatly troubled at this at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Type in the chat, forever. Babe, out loud, forever. forever. <laughs> She's the only one, so pray for Melody right now. <laughs> his kingdom will never end. Verse 34, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child old age, and she who was to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God, or the translation on your screen right now, for nothing that I have said will fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. It's God's word for us today. Uh, I, I want to give you my sermon title right out the gate today as we get started. I want to talk to us from the, the subject, the favor Type it in the chat. Help me out. Help me preach today. The favor indicator. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for this story, this, this just amazing, incredible story. God, I thank you for how it speaks even 2,000 years later as we are waiting and we're waiting but God, you're with us just as you were with Mary, and I pray that we would hear how today. Help us to see Jesus. Help us to know you more. God, it's not about my preparation today. It's not about my study. It's about your words. So God, I need you to speak today. And even more than that, I, I need us, Lord, to be able to hear. I pray that you would give us the, the ears to hear what you want to say, hearts that are ready to receive, minds that are open, God, wake us up if we're still tired. Wake me up if I'm still tired. Help me to speak with clarity today. Thank you, God, that you are always faithful. We love you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. And everybody online said together, amen. Amen. Well, um, so <laughs> I, was, I was looking through this text, and, and one of the most famous stories in Scripture, really, uh, the story of Mary uh, being told that she was going to, give birth to the Son of God. Big deal, for sure. And and it lines up right now. We're, we're getting ready to expect our, our third boy here in the Miller family. And, I mean, it's a wild time. We're, you know, we're nesting a little bit. We got the, uh, the nurseries ready, babe. It looks great. Really, really good. And the boys are, you know, they're kind of excited. I think Elias is worried. I think he's realizing that he's not going to be the baby anymore and maybe that's you know coming out but we're we're excited and so we're we're due here on January 9th but we'll see hopefully before that the baby's going to show up and but it got me thinking about past pregnancies and things in the Miller home and I'll never forget the the first time around so we had been married for four months at this point we got married in August of 2014 and uh 13 and then uh I didn't forget our anniversary don't worry just said the wrong thing. And so, uh, you know, four months into this, you know, we're just enjoying life as a new married couple. And, and uh, I had a, a youth retreat that I preached at in January. And then we, we took a trip. We like to go away for a week or so uh, to get out of Pittsburgh, to get out of the gray just for a week, maybe 10 days. We always like to do that somewhere between November and, and February. And so that year it was February and we took a trip down to Florida like we do. We like to, you know, save up and, and make that a priority. Uh, it's a little different now with kids, but yeah, th that was a former life. So, so we went to Florida and uh, and we just got this, you know, kind of condo, this this room up there, a nice kitchen, living room, and and it was a great time. And of course, because we 
taken enough trips there. Uh, I don't, I don't, never remember which city we were in. Was that Hollywood? We were in the Keys. That's right. That was the Keys trip. Yeah. Um, that makes it sound like so bougie. Like we just vacation to Florida. Like we, we get like cheap little B and B's. Like we're not, you know, we're not going crazy or anything. Getting, you know, air, you know, getting tickets on just as cheap as we possibly can. But uh, anyway, so yeah, we were in, in the Keys, uh, Key Largo, Montego, maybe one. Anyways. So, so we're there and, and I'll never forget. I'm laying in bed and, and it's early, it's like maybe 930 or whatever. And I'm laying there and I just hear Melody. She went to the bathroom and then I hear her just, just like pacing around the, the little room, you know, around the apartment. And, and it was like a nervous pacing. And I'm like, Oh, what's going on now? I'll tell you, we knew, um, we were not trying to have a child at this point in our marriage. Like we were ready to just enjoy our first year, you know, as a married couple and, you know, staying up late, whatever, not worried about kids going on date nights all the time. That's what we were trying to enjoy. Uh, but you know, things happen. And so, so anyways, so she's pacing around the floor and I kind of like, I like open one eye, groggy, kind of waking up. And she was in the bedroom at that point, And she saw my eye open and like pounced on that opportunity. She's like, he's awake. Okay. And, and I don't get a good morning, baby. I don't get a, hey, she sees me open my eye and she holds up a test and she says, Troy, I'm pregnant. And like, good morning. <laughs> good morning. And so we put the picture up on the, on the screen for you to enjoy. This was our response. We took this just shortly after. And uh, yeah, that little blue test with the, the letters P-R-E-G-N-A-N-T, that little indicator, she had taken a test because she was like, something's not, something's not right. And so she took a test and we were pregnant. And I mean, when I say pregnant, I mean, that word said blue, long before the confirmation indicator ever showed up, right? The little like red line that the time that goes by. Yeah. So I, again, she understands these things better than I do. But anyway, so this little indicator, I mean, this told us you are pregnant. And from that point on, everything was different. Th things have never, pray for me, ever, ever been the same in the Miller house. And we've got our third boy on the way. We were shocked. We were stunned. We were not expecting that. You know, I, I mean, we were, we were young and I don't know, but we were excited. And, and so the rest of the day, all we kept saying to each other was, we're, we're pregnant. You're pregnant. We're going to have a bait. What? What? Ha huh? Anyways. So if that's ever happened to you, you understand, um, you're excited, but it's like, what? So, so that indicator, it's amazing the power of that little, that little test, that little indicator and how it, how it speaks to a whole new reality, to the possibilities, to the potential of a new life, to the potential of a child and all the things you're going to have to get ready and all the changes that are going to have to take place in your life. And, and now how even though you're active, you're waiting for the next nine months, nine months for, for that child to come and, and the waiting now, the anticipation, the excitement that comes along. And I, and I was reading this story of Mary and I was wondering to myself, man, I wish there was a, a God test in our life. You know, you're, you're praying for something, you're hoping for something, you're waiting for something, you're, you're taking actions in your life and you just want to know, God, is this the right thing? Is, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And even deeper, we talked about how we got to remember that God is in control even when we wait last week. I, I need, I, I need like a, a pregnancy test to find out how God is waiting in my life. God, are you in this right now? Are you leading right now? Where are you? I wish I could just like take a test and have this little screen that says, yes, this says God is here. God, do you, are, do you love me? Is your favor on my life? Where are you right now? I need a, I need a, a favor indicator to find out how God is working in my life. And, and I want to talk today about this story uh, of, of Mary because I think it is a powerful, powerful illustration of what I'm talking about today. A, a, a woman here who, she's a young, probably 16 years old, somewhere around there. She's engaged to, to be married to a guy named Joseph. And again, culture was different back then, so the age difference would have, would have been noticeable. But 
but she's excited and and this is what you did you know and and so she's living in Nazareth and he's probably in Bethlehem where he's from and there's some kind of family connection there and they know each other so they're engaged and so they're spending a year apart to prepare themselves that's what engagement was you didn't date every day during your engagement you didn't sit and talk about well what colors should the aisle runners be like you didn't do that you you had your family take care of those details you focused on you you focused on your time with god and your character and your and just your emotional state to be ready to be married to this person and so mary's in this this engagement period and she's waiting. She's excited for this step in her life. Maybe probably nervous, right? But, but the Bible tells us that in the middle of all of this, God sends his angel Gabriel. And Gabriel shows up. And he says, hey Mary, <laughs> you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Such a strange greeting, of course, and the Bible tells us that, that Mary, uh, in verse 29, um, we'll go there, verse 29, babe, it says, Mary was greatly troubled. Why don't you type that in the chat? Greatly troubled. Are you feeling greatly troubled today? Are you feeling greatly troubled by the state of the world? Are you feeling greatly troubled by what you're seeing? Are you feeling greatly troubled with your own issues? Sometimes I wake up and I'm more troubled my problems and how I'm responding than, than I am with, with what's going on around me, you know? Are you greatly troubled? It's one thing to be greatly troubled by the circumstances of this life and yourself, but for Mary to be troubled at the words of an angel, I mean, this angel shows up just like he had at Zechariah, uh, him at the temple six months earlier, but now she's, she's troubled because here he is in her living room. Hey, Mary, you're highly favored. It's funny uh, that she is troubled by that, and we'll see why here in a second. So she's troubled and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You found favor with God. Don't be troubled. And we'll come back to why she's troubled here in a second, but... But I want to point out that phrase back in, uh, back in verse 28 where he calls her the highly favored one. In, in the Greek, literally, this word means who, you who have been favored by grace. You who have been favored by grace. And he uses the same word later on when he says, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Favor here literally means grace. You found unconditional, unearned favor with God. And so here's this, this 16-year-old engaged young lady. And she's just maybe washing dish, dishes. She's just hanging out, minding her own business. And the next thing she knows, this angel of God says, you are highly favored. You have found grace. You, you are graced by God. And everything, just like, just like that pregnancy test for us, everything was about to change for Mary. Everything was about to change. So she gets worried. Because here's what I'm finding out, and I, I think here's what Mary knew, is that usually whenever you get, uh, get a word from God like this, it, it, it precedes some, some trouble. It means something's about to change. God speaks this kind of word of encouragement to our lives whenever he knows we're on the edge of something new and something terrifying. And I want to explain to you a little bit about this word grace. Because in verse, uh, verse 30 where he says, you have found favor with God. We got to understand the language here a little bit because English and Greek don't really work out well. It's hard to translate this ancient language into 21st century English. So let me try to explain this to you a little bit without getting too technical. She says, you have found favor. You have found grace with God. Now that word with is vitally important to this message today. So don't miss this. In the Greek this word with means with, okay, that's obvious enough. But what they did in Greek was depending on the form of the word that came after it, that word with could mean different things. 
And that's the case with all prepositions. Kind of like an, uh, an old English grammar lesson here. Uh, to, we got to understand this. The word with here, depending on the following word, is going to have a different meaning here. And in the Greek, in this verse, this word with, I mean, like you could think of like, this Bible is with me. I have it with me. Um, it could be a word of ownership. It could be a word of location. Here in this Greek, it's a word of, of location. With. So it's not like Mary comes to God and says, hey, hey God, do you have some favor? And then God throws her some favor. It's with me. I've got it here in my back pocket. Let me give it to you. This word with is, is a word about presence. It's a word of location. Here's what I mean. There's a difference between giving my boys my iPad to play with because I have it with me and me playing with my boys. Are you following? It's kind of convoluted, but it's important that we get it. So I love, you know, finishing up work, closing down the computer and coming out here and like wrestling with my boys and just going crazy and tossing them and tickles and all of that. They are with their daddy. And when they're with their daddy, there comes a, a love and a joy that can't be found when I give them the iPad that was with me before that. Are you tracking with me? This is a word about presence. This is a word about presence. God's grace and his favor is not just something he gives you. It's something that he provides when you're in his presence. God's favor and his grace is with him. When you're with God, you are with grace. When you are with God, you are with favor. These things are things that come with being with God. And the angel comes to Mary and he uses this Greek word. He says, Mary, you have found favor with God. He is assuring Mary of God's presence. He's assuring Mary that, Mary, you are with God. You are in his presence right now. And because you're in his presence, he's got grace for you. He has favor with you. I know I'm about to call you into something difficult you don't even understand yet, but God is with you. God's favor is with you. What this means is that favor is not dependent on our circumstances, church. God's favor and grace is not determined by what's going on around us. Instead, God's grace is evidenced by his presence with us. Let me put it this way up on the screen. An assurance of favor always precedes a test of our faith. Because what comes after this declaration to Mary it is a, on the surface an absolutely incredible promise. Mary, you are going to give birth. Let's, let's read that. In verse 31, it says, You will be with child, give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. I'm kind of going a little out of order, babe, but so if, if it's on there, cool. If not, and I'm going to come back to this. He will be great, and he will be called of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. I mean, that's an incredible word. That's an incredible promise. On the surface, it looks like, yeah, absolutely, God's favor is with Mary. She's going to give birth to the Savior of the world, the King. She's going to be like the mother of the King, right? I mean, come on, that's, that's amazing stuff. But think back to the situation. She's a young 16-year-old virgin engaged to be with this man, and the angel interrupts this process and says, Hey, Mary, God's favor is with you, but you're about to be pregnant. And so it's in this moment that Mary needs an assurance of God's favor. She needs to hear that God's grace is with her. She needs to hear that God is for her. No matter what her circumstance looks like, her circumstance doesn't dictate God's favor. So church, if, you are, if you're waiting for 2020 to end up good, and you're waiting for the ball to drop on January 1st, and things to, um, to magically get better, and suddenly now God's favors with us and God loves us, I'm, you're going to be waiting a long time time because I have found out time and time again that my circumstances will sometimes contradict 
the promises of God. But that's because our circumstance and God's character are not dependent on each other. God is who he is outside of what I'm going through. You could be waiting for your job to come back. You could be waiting for your loved one to get healthy right now. You could, and I'm not trying to negate these things, but what I'm telling you is that if you're looking at those things as indicators to God's favor, you are going to be disappointed. I want to tell you today that God's grace is with you. God's favor is with you independent of what you're going through. Somebody say amen in the chat because you need to hear that today. God's favor is here no matter what you're going through. So you need to hear an assurance right now of God's favor because your faith might be tested. You might walk into a situation and wonder, is something wrong with me? Does God actually, why would he let me go through this? Does God really love me? Yes, he absolutely does. And here's how I know this. The angel declares to Mary in the verses I just read, that she was about to give birth to the Messiah, word in Hebrew, which means the anointed one, the chosen one. And this was a promise made to the Israelite people hundreds of years earlier. They'd been waiting. There'd been no prophets. It had been quiet. Now the Roman government had conquered Israel and, and ruled over it. I mean, it's hopeless. They're waiting for a promise from God. And the angel comes and he says, Mary, it's going to be you. You're going to be the one to carry this child. And at the heart of this text, church, is not Mary. Mary isn't the point here. In fact, your faith, your obedience to God, your willingness to listen isn't even the point of this text. Mary wasn't chosen. I, this might step on some theological toes, especially in, our, in a traditional area like ours, but Mary wasn't chosen because she was better than anybody else. Mary wasn't chosen to, to carry the Son of God because she was holier than everyone else. She was chosen because God just decided to choose her. God just looked down from heaven and said, her, I need her. And he called her and his favor and grace was with her. There was nothing she could do to earn it. There was nothing she could do to earn this moment. God was going to fulfill his promises to Israel. This text, church, is all about Jesus. It says that he will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. An incredible promise. And so Mary follows up and, and she, I mean, Zachariah had some questions and doubts and so does Mary in verse 34, if we can jump. Verse 34, she says, how, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. Now, this is a little different than Zachariah. You'll talk about this this week or, or today, but she's not, she's not doubting the angel's word. She's just trying to get in on the game plan. Like the angels in the huddle with her at the football game saying, all right, we're going to go right. You, you slant. And she's just going, how, what am I doing? What's going on? I'm a, I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man. I, how is this even possible? I'm good for it, but just, I need some details. Have you ever asked God that? Like, I just need one direction, right, babe? Like, just give me one thing. I don't doubt you. I just want to know the next step. That's all Mary's asking. And she says, the, the angel answered in, in uh, verse 30, the Holy Spirit on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month for nothing that I have spoken will fail with God. Nothing is impossible with God. And I want to pick up on a detail here. I was reading this and I have these moments I'm studying and I'm preparing and I get my mind blown. Like I read something in a commentary or a journal and it just, it, I have to mention this. 
In verse 35, the angel says that the the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And this commentary pointed out that that we should see a connection here in in 135 all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, where the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over everything and the bible says that the holy spirit hovered over the deep the holy spirit hovered over the deep and it was by that that god began to speak and bring life out of nothing and church this text is about jesus and and listen jesus is ultimately our indicator of god's favor because in mary's life the holy spirit hovered over her and brought to life the Son of God out of nothing. In a virgin's body, the Holy Spirit spoke and life came to be. Jesus is a new creation for us. Jesus is a new hope. Jesus is everything we're looking for, made made possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you today that this is the indicator of God's favor in your life. This is how salvation works. That even when you feel like you don't deserve it, even when you feel barren, even when you feel ill-equipped and you don't feel like there's anything you could do to make it happen, just like Mary, the Holy Spirit of God comes to your life and hovers over you and empowers you and gives Jesus to you. I'll put it this way, that Jesus was formed in Mary so that he could come alive in you. Jesus was birthed through Mary so that you might receive a new birth. Jesus is the indicator of God's favor. I know that the world is spiraling right now. I know things are out of control, but Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Jesus is is God-made flesh, that in the conception of Jesus, divinity and humanity were forever united, and now we never have to question again if God is with us. We never have to question again if God favors us. In fact, we know that God favored us. This was the single most important moment in human history. The conception of Jesus Christ is a symbol to us of how God works in our lives. Jesus is the indicator of God's favor in your life. Christian, you've been following Jesus for years. I want to remind you, he's with you. Maybe you're watching and you're, you're not really a religious person and you're on the fence and you're not sure about all of this and you don't know where God is. I want to tell you today that Jesus Christ came as God, put on flesh, walked among us, and was evidence of God's favor with us. This ancient word in Hebrew was Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And that was his name. Jesus is the evidence of God's favor in your life. So no matter how ill-equipped you feel, no matter what you're going through, no matter how barren you feel, you feel like you don't deserve it, guess what? You don't. But he gives it to us anyway. And so here's where we end. How do we respond? Because I think that's important. This declaration that, you know what? Nothing is impossible with God, but you know what can get in the way? Us. Nothing, not a single word that God will speak to you will fail. Isaiah tells us that as the rain falls to the earth and gives life to everything it touches, so will God's word not come back void. But the question is, what do you do with it? Yeah, it's great to hear this message. It's great to, for me to shout into the microphone and get us excited in this Advent season. But the question is, what do we do? Because we can hear this and we go, okay, that's great, God. I'm going to go back to trying to figure it out under my own power. I, I'm just going to keep doing it my own way. Or, or God, no, I, I don't deserve this. I, I could never possibly earn your grace. And I pray today, church, that our response would be Mary's response in verse 38. And I'll put it on screen. She says, I am the Lord's servant. I love, again, the original language here. It literally says, Behold, the servant of the Lord, the maid servant of the Lord. She says, Here I am. 
I don't have it all together. I'm a 16 year old virgin. I'm about to walk into some craziness because because I think she understood at this point that to become pregnant outside of wedlock was to bring upon herself shame, was to bring upon herself gossip. She was going to go, th- I mean, she was going to have to explain to her fiance, hey, babe, um, so we haven't seen each other in months and we're getting ready to get married, but I'm pregnant, but I promise that I've never been with a man in my entire life. This is from God. I mean, they would be institutionalizing her, right? But she knew. And God, what's amazing to me is that God was calling her to this. God was calling her into this. God knew that he was going against cultural norms. He knew he was going to send her into this. And that's why he said, no, you are favored. No matter who says what about you, no matter who slanders you, no matter what looks your fiance gives you, I am with you. And when you know that, and when you are confident of God's favor, evidence to you through Jesus Christ, you're able to say like Mary, I'm your servant. And she says, may it be to me as you have said. And Gabriel leaves. Listen to me right here. What is God calling you to that you are holding back? What area of obedience does he want you to walk into that you are holding back? Would you echo what Mary says? May it be to me as, it, as you have said. I'm your servant. No matter what it costs me, no matter what it leads me into, I'm yours, God. This is the way of, of Jesus, church. Even if it costs me everything, no matter what people say about me, no matter what looks people give me, no matter how many followers I lose online, no matter what happens to me, I'm going to do what God has called me to do because he has favored me, because he loves me, because he has brought me to life, because everything I've been looking for is found in him and ultimately because I was created to serve him. It's the way of Jesus. Jesus says that anyone who would follow me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. What cross do you need to pick up today? What area of obedience do you need to start walking in this week? I want, I want to invite you to discuss that. I want to invite you to talk about that with an alive group this week. Reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you. This holiday season, as COVID continues to rise, as, as tensions are all over the place politically and just in every way imaginable, how is God saying, I favor you? I know your circumstance doesn't seem like it's true, but I do. I love you. My favor for you is found in my presence. Get in his presence this week. Get before God. Get into the scriptures. Read this story. Worship God. And it's in his presence that is fullness of joy and hope and favor. May it be to me as you have said, God. Let me pray for you. Father, We worship you today. We recognize your presence in this place and online, wherever we're watching from. God, I want to pray for someone right now who is discouraged and who feels all on their own and they're waiting and they're waiting for things to turn around. They're struggling with depression. God, would you assure them right now that your favor is with them, that your presence is with them, that you gave them Jesus Christ as evidence of your favor and grace. God, I pray for someone right now who's struggling with an illness. Would you heal them? God, I feel like there's someone who's who's doubting themselves. Speak life to them. Remind them of who they are in you. Maybe somebody watching this later on in the week and they're not sure about their job, God, would you provide for them? Most of all, God, thank you for your word that speaks life to us today. I pray that if there's anything that I spoke that was not of you, Lord, would it fall by the wayside? God, may it be to us as you have spoken. And Lord, I want to pray for someone right now who the Holy Spirit is drawing them to yourself and they sense the power of the Most High overshadowing them 
And God, you, you want to breathe the life of Jesus in them, just like you did at creation in Genesis 1, just like you did in Mary's womb. God, you want to bring forth life. You want to speak something new. You want to forgive them. You want to give them a new identity. All they need to do, all they need to do right now, and if this is you, I pray that you would say this out loud. I'm your servant, God. May it be to me as you have spoken. God, we pray that in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, that we would walk in new life today. And everybody typed together. Amen.